The East African Airways flight from London had a scheduled stop in Germany where we met members of the Miller clan at the airport. It had an unscheduled stop in Alexandria, Egypt, because headwinds necessitated taking on more fuel. The VC-10 touched down in Tebby just a little behind schedule. It was about 7.30 a.m. The first day we spent in the capital, Kampala, we stayed at the Apollo. The next morning, we went to the Hertz office and rented a VW Bug that came complete with spare tire, complete set of tools to make repairs, and a machete. The owner suggested getting a shell roadmap from the engine downtown. He also suggested we take the road west to Queen Elizabeth National Park and the Rwanda border. He gave us a little chart that had a few hotels on it. We had no reservations. We just figured we'd stop where and when we were tired. A local painted a things go better with coke sign. We stopped at the markets. We stopped at road stands. Barry bought a pineapple from some kid and a bunch of small tree ripe and bananas as we passed by the equator. The bananas cost the equivalent of about a dime. And as Barry got back in the car, the farmer came running after us. He had Margaret a little bit, but all he wanted to do was to give us the rest of the bananas. This was one of the possible hotels, but we decided to wait and stay at the Kitwamba Hotel. Actually, that was a lodge. On a dirt road just south of Queen Elizabeth Park, we stopped to take a distant photo of Rwanda. A truck carrying soldiers, Rwandan, as it turned out, stopped to see if Mickey had broken down and needed help. The village had a soccer field. Both of the guys were getting ready to play when a couple of them, maybe more, ran over to us. One of them said, Hey, what position do you play? Barry said, Well, normally fall back, sometimes right winger. Why? Well, he said, They only have ten. Why don't you play for them? Well, said Barry, I don't have my boots with me or uniform. Oh, don't worry, said the other guy. Half of us don't have boots, and you're the only white guy. We, we, we know which team you're on. We stayed that night at the Mountains of the Moon Hotel in Fort Portal. That's where there's an H on the scrap of a map that we got from the Hertz guy in Kampala.
We almost ran into this elephant as we rounded a corner of what's called the channel track. Later, a ranger would tell us, just stop and keep the engine running. He'll walk right past you. But if he does try to sit on the front of your car, just, just back up. It puts the alignment out. That's the trouble with Volkswagens. The elephant just walked right past. Just outside of Fort Portal, we stopped to pick up a hitchhiker. He turned out to be a ranger from Murchison Falls Park on his way back to work. He knew how to get from where we were to the lodge, even though there were no roads shown on the shell map. In fact, some of the places we went, there were no roads at all. As he said, you just got to know those things, and it helps if you're both a local and the ranger. It's also a good way to see animals. Ferry boats take you from one side of the rivers flowing into Lake Albert to the other. I don't know if there's a schedule. You just show up and someone helps you get on board and helps you get off. We had our friendly hitchhiker come ranger with us. The hippos and the alligators don't seem to be bothered by the ferry boat. Mornings were relaxing. All of the National Park Lodges have wonderful English gardens, as they call them. We chose today to drive around, meet a few of the locals, and eventually take an excursion boat on the lower sections of the Victoria Nile. This guy was a local. Actually, he was a local chief. He wanted to make sure that we felt very welcome. His English, by the way, had a very Cambridge accent. The captain saw Barry was taking pictures, came over to him and told him to be careful, but he said, if you do fall overboard, 
remember, swim on your side. Alligators can't get their mouths around somebody as wide as you are. We came in to let somebody off the boat. I'm not so sure I'd feel so welcome here. Not a place to go swimming. Just a few days ago, we were driving along the banks of Lake Victoria. That's drained by the Victoria Nile, which, after passing through another lake, came crashing down into Lake Albert. Although to get squeezed into this gorge, it must be less than 30 feet across. The cascade then comes down about 30 feet. This Cape Apollo was a little less friendly than most of the elephants we'd seen. We'd stopped to take some pictures and turned off the engine. He made a mock charge, stopped, reassessed. This time, our hitchhiking ranger was sitting in the back seat. He leaned forward and said to Barry, start the engine, and when he charges, cross in front of him at 90 degrees. A cat buffalo can sure out around a Volkswagen. He died charged. We crossed in front of him four or five times, then gave up. Margaret, for some reason, quit filming the animal and proceeded to keep telling Barry and no one certain terms. Don't stall the engine! When we got to Murchison's, we lost our hitchhiker. He had to go back to work. The next morning, we hired another interpretive ranger. 
for all of five Uganda shillings. That's like 50 cents. He seemed to know all the paths to the best views, and we were the only people there. In fact, as we drove into the Para parking lot, Maggie mentioned that we'd been in Uganda almost a week. Well, since we left Kampala, and had not seen one single white face. Barry hadn't noticed. The guests of the Parado were mostly European, more British in many ways than those folks from North Scotland. That's Barry's birthplace. This is the main road back to Kambala. There was an approaching storm, so we got some pineapples for refreshment and waited.
back to Entebbe for an overnight at the Apollo Hotel, then to the airport and the guru at the airport. <laughs>